Does least. Princeton fall asleep in three seconds? Yeah, and sleep through like a hurricane? Yeah. Or kids? I know. Yeah, I think it's a convenience thing sometimes. Oh, I didn't it's, hear them. They could bottle that. Yeah. <laughs> because here we are, it's actually morning right now, and we're gonna talk about bedtime routine and how that helps you have a great morning, right? Yeah. I could just crawl into this bed right now. <laughs> like, let's just do our bedtime routine all together and I'm gonna go take a nap. Okay, so this is good because you're not a super rigid, structured person. No. That's mm -mm. the other identical twin. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, and I am, however, sometimes by the end of the day. Yeah. You don't have a lot of that rigid structure left to you. You don't have the emotional energy to do difficult things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. Are you ever like, anybody else do this where you're like, brush my teeth, not brush my teeth. Like, and then, but I have to tell myself. Flossing literally, I timed it. it. Flossing literally takes 28 seconds. Oh wow, you floss fast. I, I'm, I'm I can't not brush my teeth, but I wash my face is out. That's okay, the one. That's the I'm one like, you. Yeah. Ah, and then I think of Diana saying, "Do you want to be a wrinkly elephant when you're older? Oh. People are going to think I'm your daughter." <laughs> Do you remember you said that? On a video? I said that like on a real video. <laughs> yeah. How are we doing so but far? <laughs> I remember when you had little ones. Yeah. But your skin looked great still, because I was like, "Hey, your skin looks great." You're like, "I don't wash my face." Yeah, maybe there's a secret. <laughs> that's like the next thing that's going to come out. Women who don't wash their face are younger. Anyway. But obviously we all know how helpful routines are. Yeah. And there's just this concept of what does nighttime Diana need to do for morning Diana to have mm -hmm. a great day? And I have found that that makes a huge difference. Sure. And so we're just gonna run through things that may or may not be part of your nighttime routine or maybe you don't have a nighttime routine, so then we could start there, but that are just really helpful for setting up the next day and getting off to a great start. So. And some really interesting research that backs it up as well. We are gonna tell you exactly why you need a good book next to your bed. Yes. It's, it's, ama it's astounding, do not miss that part. <laughs> so, okay, really important things though, just right off the bat, do you know what your caffeine cutoff time is during the day? Um, yeah, I make my last cup of coffee at noon. So no, I'll drink too. it for like mm -hmm. hour, hour and a half, yep. but that not after that. So the sneaky thing about caffeine, and that's me too, I'm super sensitive to mm -hmm. caffeine, but it also has to do with the amount of caffeine that you're consuming because ca caffeine has a half-life. Mm -hmm. And so what it's doing is its effectiveness is reducing by half and half and half and half as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. So even if you cut off by noon, but you just had like 10 espressos, it still actually could be affecting you sure. later in the day because it yep. just takes time for that all to get out of your system. So yes. obviously that is huge or not mm -hmm. obviously having your caffeine cut off time. It's hard. Are you ever there at like two in the afternoon and you're like, well, oh. I actually keep half calf at home. Yep. Now we only have half calf here. And if I go out, Starbucks has a higher caffeine concentration in their mm -hmm. coffee too. So I always only get half calf there yep. too. And obviously being pregnant, I've cut like way back. So I've been doing a lot of decaf just to... You might also Hold find something warm. Yeah. Side note: If you drink Diet Coke um, and you have restless legs at night, which can inhibit sleep, mm -hmm. um, I have noticed when I drink Diet Coke now that very often I have restless legs at night. And so I, as much as I love Diet Coke, even though we shouldn't, um, I can't drink it anymore. Some kind. Of, sometimes it's kind of nice to have those things yeah. that like make it like no, Speaking not of. worth it. Yeah. Because you kind of know it's not good for you and those artificial sweeteners. Okay, that's yeah. good. Good to know. I don't. Know. It was helpful I, for that, me. That mm -hmm. might be me too. Okay. Okay. Here's the other thing. Screens. Again, we know. Yeah. Right. However, did you know the opposite of the blue light on screens is the red light found mm -hmm. in things like a fire, like a campfire or incandescent, like old fashioned incandescent bulbs. I don't know. We don't have those anymore, right? right? We have smart lights and bright lights and daylight. Everything is bright daylight around us. Um, but when you sit in front of a fireplace, is there anything more relaxing? Mm -mm. And that's because it's triggering to your body uh, the melatonin response. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we have to get off our phones. Again, I think we all know that. And then sit in front of, or in the evening, if you just want to light a few candles for your family, doesn't that also just kind of sound yeah. like nice and soothing? Like, okay, guys, we're getting ready for bed. Yeah, that's actually a Huga principle, okay. though. And so it makes sense why they, yeah. they light tons of candles. But yeah. again, same thing. I'm so grateful we have a gas fireplace. Mm -hmm. And so I've been, that's been part of my new routine is sitting in front of that at yeah. night after we put the kids down. It's awesome. And did you know, though, getting outside during the day, you also produce, important. the sun produces melatonin um, yeah. on your skin, too. 
we always see about the vitamin D, but the, it's huge melatonin yep. production when you're outside. So even getting outside for like 15 minutes makes a huge difference too, because okay. I don't have a fireplace. So. so now let's talk about reading fiction. And then we're going to put yeah. all this together into a routine that it's we all can a do. A master routine. It's, gonna be, it's only going to be 15 steps. I'm yeah. just kidding. Okay. So I had heard this statistic quite a while back and it has stuck with me. If you read fiction for six minutes, six minutes, <laughs> It can reduce your stress level by up to 68%. Six minutes of reading, reduction in stress by 68%. And what's tricky is that often, if we're feeling a little bit stressed, unsettled, just, I don't know, do you ever just kind of like, even last night, I was just kind of like, nah, like, yeah, it's just, I'm just a little off, right? Yeah. I, my first thought wasn't, Dawn, grab your fiction book. It's going to reduce your stress. I wanted <laughs> to scroll. Just the fire. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to scroll Instagram, right? And I know, I yeah. know I'm not going to feel better, but yet, I don't know. I was like looking for some human connection or something. Yeah. And so I was, I was looking up this study again because I wanted to make sure I was sharing accurate information. And it said that when we are scrolling, we are, it's keeping our brain on alert because we are changing from information to information, from post to post. And that actually keeps our brain in this state of alertness, which is also where anxiety lies. We know this, right? We get off Instagram or Facebook. We don't feel any better. In fact, sometimes, I don't know, I generally feel a little bit worse. So yeah. this has been huge for me. I really try not to go on social media before bedtime. And I have been reading and it makes a huge difference in being able to fall asleep. And reading as a form of relaxation actually beats out drinking tea, going for a walk, yeah, or listening to music. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? It was number one. Those are close seconds, all three of those yeah. things. But reading is still And one. the difference between reading and television is that reading is actually engaging your imagination and mm -hmm. it's engaging your brain in a way that it helps then you to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Whereas television, obviously a blue light, which we know isn't good, but then it also is a lot of stimulation and your yeah. brain is, is wired. Anything that has movement triggers it. So it's that yeah. similar thing of keeping you in a high alert, mm -hmm. like that bite size information. Yeah. All right, I'm going to throw one more statistic yep. at you. So fiction is awesome, of course. This also might be the only time of day that you can squeeze in your Bible reading. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is going to be encouraging or discouraging, but a recent study just found that it's only when you read your Bible four days a week or more that you experience a significant difference in anxiety, outlook, yep. feeling hopeful. I yes. was a little discouraged by that. <laughs> I wanted to see just a nice like upward trend where like, you know what, even yeah. if you've got one day in, yeah. you know what, you're going to feel a little better about life. And yeah. then if you get two, you're going to feel a little bit better about your relationships. And three, you're going to have a little more faith in God. And then I four, know. but it's actually like this. It's like, uh, sorry, not much happening. Okay. But you know, you're trying good for you. And then like, yeah, the increase though is off the charts mm -hmm. of anxiety reduction, feeling hopeful, being filled with yeah. faith. And so there's a couple of practical ways to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Reading your paper Bible at night is going to have some of those same effects. So that's awesome. I like to listen to the Bible recap podcast while I'm doing my face and teeth brushing mm -hmm. routine. Yep. And so that's worked out really well for me because a lot of times what I'll do then. So while I'm washing, brushing everything, I'll listen and it's kind of perfect. It's like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go read the scripture in bed that they're talking about okay. for the day. Yeah. And I feel like I have a little bit more understanding Context, about it. Yeah. And so now then that that kind of gets me going, it gets the momentum going then to actually go read my Bible if yeah. that's a struggle for some of us. Mm -hmm. I also have the world's greatest Bible reading plan that we're all doing together. So I'll link to that video as well. Mm -hmm. Or Dwell is an app. You do have to buy a subscription. It's not too much. Um, but it will read scripture to you. It'll read it in a British accent to music. It has playlists <laughs> if you're like, I'm anxious, I yeah. need to fall asleep or whatever, yeah. and or read through the Bible plans. And so dwell is one more way that you can be listening to scripture while you're going to bed. Yeah. So what I do, should I share mine real quick? And then you can Your share routine? the like yeah. actual ultimate. Oh, okay. So Tom and I always watch like one show before bed. Um, we're watching White Collar right now. It's on Amazon Prime. It's very clean. It's actually rated PG, but it's very intriguing. It's one of those like crime who did it yeah. kind of shows. Um, so we watch one show, only one. I, like, How do you do it? One. If it is after nine o'clock, we cannot start another episode you of the show. Each and other it's always after, a little bit after nine yeah. at okay. least. 
So we watch a show, but that again, I don't generally just fall asleep then after watching TV. Tom's out, right? So then I do the rest of my routine, which is to read for usually like 10 to 15 minutes. And then I put on dwell and I fall asleep to, I set the sleep timer for 15 minutes. And I try to, cause I do the Bible recap in the morning. And so I replay the scripture from the morning. So oh. that just to kind of another way mm-hmm. to reinforce it. But I really try when I'm listening, I, even if my thoughts start to wander, I'm thinking about tomorrow or the next day, I really try to keep directing it back to the scripture. Yep. And I am out like a light then. If I can keep focused on the scripture and it's a very nice voice reading it, mm-hmm. that really helps me to be able to fall asleep quickly because there are nights otherwise where I will lay there for an hour just like yep. thinking. So And so if you're going to wash your face... <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, is that, that before be, the show? I usually try to brush my teeth and wash my face when the kids are getting yeah. ready for bed. Because you're in I there know, with them. Yeah, by like 839. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I actually, so I guess my, my routine's a little disjointed. But yeah. if I'm going to wash my face, I do it earlier. Yeah. No, that's good. And so one of the keys, we did this for a while until we got the habit. We actually had an alarm go off on our phones to remind us that it's time to start the kids' bedtime okay. routine. I don't know. We would just get going, busy, playing, and all of a sudden it's like 8 o'clock and we're like, okay, you're supposed to be in bed. Like, yeah. And so setting an alarm to signal it's time for your bedtime routine, mm-hmm. that also can be your curfew for devices, mm-hmm. is can be helpful for a lot of people. And so we did that initially to start the habit. Um, and then I... I, after the kids go down, I immediately go to my bathroom to do the tooth brushing. And I also do just to get a little more of that incandescent light. I recently got an infrared light Mm -hmm. panel because with the pregnancy and stuff, I just haven't been sleeping as well. And so, and it's also good for your skin. Okay. I'll I'll link to the one I got. I I like it so far. (laughs) Um, And so I am sitting in front of my red light panel, uh, brushing and everything and listening to the Bible recap. And then usually I'll go, I'll then hang out a little bit with Princeton and his parents are here. So again, our routine has gotten a little off. Um, But then when it's time to crawl into bed, I am so strict about not being on my phone. And sometimes it's tempting. Like Princeton Mm -hmm. actually traveled to India um, to go get his parents. And I don't know, you know, when things are a little different, like one night I fell into a YouTube hole. I think for an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even believe it. Another night I fell into an Instagram hole yeah. and I was just like, what is happening? And so I was like, no phone in bed. <laughs> like, I was like, you have your fiction book yeah. and that's it. And so yeah. we actually recently asked, what are some of your fiction, favorite fiction books? So that is going to be the next video we'll go through. Okay, that's fine. You convinced me, yeah. you know, and I got my routine now. Uh, what am I going to read before bed? So that'll be the next video. Um, I forgot to mention when I go downstairs and we kind of hang out a little bit, we clean the kitchen. Mm. So that's really important for us for, that's the main thing that nighttime Diana can do for morning Diana to have a good day. Is that something that you guys do? Are you, that's not your thing. If it happens, it happens. (laughs) I know some people like, you know, pack the kids as lunches. I, that would, I, I would much rather do it in the morning. And so it really is. I do think cleaning the kitchen is a good one, but I think it sets up the next day for success. But I know it's like lay out everybody's clothes, make lunches, all that. And I think you have to know yourself by like 6.30. I'm like, I'm done. See, and you guys have always had a really early morning schedule Mm -hmm. because Tom's work schedule was that way. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a big, for those of us who are like rolling out at 7, 7.30 or whatever, you would need that. You You would need to have things in order. And I think we hit the ground running in the morning. So having a clean kitchen for us and having Mm -hmm. the dishes washed and everything is really important. Yeah. So... But I, I've really found just for myself lately, I'm really trying to start and end the day with scripture because I don't know. I've just, I don't know that anything's changed in the world. I've just lately found it a little bit harder to stay steady. And we've been planting our garden and we like planted all these tomato plants. I bought them like already started. <laughs> and I was tossing a plastic mulch bag that was empty and it, it took out one of the plants and it totally just like snapped it off. And I just like let it lay there. I was like, I'll come back and get it later. Well, the next morning I came out and it is just laying there all shriveled. And I'm like, 
it's been like 12 hours since I accidentally snapped it off and it's already lost all of its life, wow. you know? And I was like, oh Lord, like I just felt like it was this picture of it was just yeah. like, just stay connected to me and we'll be good. Like we'll be good, it's right? So and so true. it was just, I don't know, that has totally stuck with me. <laughs> And the hardest thing right now, I feel like, to be consistent with Bible reading is, again, I, I think we're designed for community around this. And so that's a little tricky right now. Um, so we that's where we need a Bible reading plan or we need a system. So if it's the Bible Recap podcast or mm -hmm. the reading plan, you always just have to know where you're going to start. Yes. you, mm -hmm. And then it, that level of resistance to get going is so much lower, yeah. right? Like if, if yeah. in the morning you were like, oh, what am I going to read today? Totally. Or, oh, what's a good podcast for Bible reading? Yeah. No, you I know. feel like Tara's waiting for me in the yeah. morning. She's like, come on, come on. Yeah. Grab your Bible coffee. readers. <laughs> yeah. Grab your coffee. We're, we're ready. So we announced that the, the baby coming is going to be a girl. We did our first gender reveal ever. And that was not so fun. It was super Should fun. Should we always do them now? I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. Any reason to like get together and yeah. celebrate, right? Yeah. I just think it's so fun. So we have a little girl coming. I have not bought anything yet. Like any, no. I thought I would be so tempted yeah. to like get little pink ruffly things and stuff i think maybe i've been busy but uh i think that might still be coming as we get closer <laughs> um and it was funny i was sitting next to you guys in church yesterday and adeline and um i was reading the worship slides and i was like they're a little fuzzy and i was like i put my contacts in and my glasses on oh <laughs> And I told Princeton, I actually told Adeline, and then I told Princeton, and he was like, is that pregnancy brain? And I was like, I think that's like definition. <laughs> <laughs> oh so there's gosh. a few of those little moments happening, yeah. or I was, I mean, I was just cooking. Uh, this is happening a lot. I'm cooking and I forget to turn off the burner. Ooh, yeah. That could be like a little more dangerous. I mean, yeah. I don't want to ruin my vision either, right. but like burning down the house would be bad too. So yeah. there's like, we just got to keep a close eye on me right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> But it, even in those moments, especially if you're experiencing any lack of sleep or, you know, things that throw you out of mm -hmm. your, like, that's where these routines are so yeah. important, yeah. especially by the time you get to the end of the day. So we would love to know what is, like, what is essential in your bedtime routine? Mm -hmm. What's helped you get into a rhythm? What yeah. helps you to fall asleep at night and get the best rest possible? Mm -hmm. So Father, I thank you. I thank you that you're with us. I thank you that you're leading us, uh, that you made our physical bodies in an extraordinary way. Lord, that we're designed, Lord, uh, to be in rhythm, Lord, with your seasons and with what's happening in the world around us. And, and also you designed us for rest, Lord. And that's where uh, we get a holy break and also where our bodies are restored. So Lord, I pray, especially for those struggling with sleep, Lord, that you would give wisdom, that you would give healing, and that you would bring deep, refreshing rest to each one of us. Lord, help us to find the rhythms that work best for us and ultimately that honor you. And so I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>